Yeah, uh, I shaved. Sorry. Hey there, welcome to That Dang Dad. My name is Phil, and my greatest fear is the possibility that love is not enough. Today I come to you as a David Lynch super fan, but it was not always this way. Uh, My first encounter with Lynch was Lost Highway, which I uh, rented due to the fact that it had a Marilyn Manson track on the soundtrack. Uh, I saw it when I was about 17 or 18, and I did not get it. Uh, A couple years later, I tried to watch Mulholland Drive, and I did not get it. I'd basically given up on the whole David Lynch experiment until about eight or nine years later when I read a David Foster Wallace essay about Blue Velvet. Decided to give Lynch one last chance to see what it was all about, and for whatever reason, Blue Velvet just clicked with me. That was my gateway drug. Went and revisited the rest of David Lynch's work, loved it, and um, just he's a hugely influential and important filmmaker to me. And um, so I was so excited when my copy of The Women of David Lynch arrived. It's a collection of 13 essays that are about the women that uh, feature in David Lynch films. Uh, If you know anything about Lynch, you know he's got his two favorite archetypes. He's got the uh, virginal blonde damsel in distress and the dark-haired femme fatale. This is such a well-worn groove for him, combined with his penchant for making these women the obsession of the other males in his movies that... uh, it's not unreasonable to maybe detect a little misogyny bubbling up underneath the surface. and I think that's what makes The Women of Lynch such an interesting read. Uh, each author finds a different angle to explore with the women in David Lynch films that goes way beyond sort of a problematic, yep, nope kind of thing. Uh, the essays range from uh, Lee Kelman Kolb explaining the intoxicating electricity of nearly every woman in David Lynch films to Lauren Fox describing the occult mother maiden crone imagery that's present in his women. Uh, Hannah Klein explores her experiences with bipolar disorder through the lens of Mulholland Drive. And uh, no Lynch scholarship would be complete without a discussion of coffee and pie, courtesy of Mallory O'Mara. And uh, lest you think that the book is just a hagiography of David Lynch, um, Melanie McFarlane has some pretty pointed criticism about David Lynch's relationship to race. Yeah... I was just blown away with the variety and creativity on display in the essays, and uh, they really get to the heart of why I love David Lynch. I think his films invite the viewer to engage at the individual level, uh, to find your own unique resonances and thematic murmurations that captivate you. You know, you'll often hear David Lynch films described as having dreamscapes or nightmare logic, uh, a focus on mood and emotion rather than plot. And I think the effect of this is that David Lynch's work really gets into your head and kind of stimulates new trains of thought and invites you to see things from different angles. The book really makes me want to contribute my own essay, but that's, uh, of course, impossible. One, because the book's already been written, and two, because I'm a filthy man. (laughs) The book is for women authors. However, uh, if I was going to write my own essay on the women of uh, David Lynch, I think I would write it on the way that uh, many of Lynch's women are torn apart by conflicting societal pressures on how to perform womanhood. Uh, You see this in a lot of David Lynch films, but I think it's strongest across the 25-year span of Twin Peaks, uh, especially in the character of Laura Palmer. You know, Firewalk with me is probably one of the most harrowing films I've ever seen, particularly because it follows the final days of Laura, uh, her life and her struggle for her own soul right before she's killed. You know, she's the uh, teenage high school student, the homecoming queen, the all-American good girl next door. She's the unattainable fantasy girl, the avatar of incorruptible youth. She's a drug dealer. She's a sex worker. She's a rape victim. She's a best friend. She's a corpse. In the first season of Twin Peaks, Laura's boyfriend, Bobby, uh, at her funeral, he screams at all the people assembled around her, 
Uh, you want to know who killed Laura? You did. We all did. And he's, he's goddamn right. The entire society of Twin Peaks demanded that Laura Palmer dance to like 10 different songs. They basically ate her alive when she stumbled. So for me, I'm really interested in the way that Lynch's women are forced to perform. Uh, you know, Bobby Peru assaults Lula and forces her to beg for sex that she doesn't want. Uh, Frank Booth forces Dorothy Valens to be his incestuous mommy. Um, Donna tries to perform flirtation and sex work as a challenge to Laura. In Mulholland Drive, Betty Elm literally performs an acting scene as the young lover of an older man, once in disgust and once in arousal. And I think it's interesting because, by and large, Lynch's men don't perform. Men are directors, crime bosses, cops, jealous husbands, paying customers. Uh, Lynch's men own the spaces. Lynch's men demand the performances. And yet for Lynch, forced performance is a horror. Uh, I think while other filmmakers sort of linger lustfully on performance, Lynch kind of balks at it, I think. I think his films hate it. But anyway, what do you think? Uh, are Lynch films feminist? Are they problematic? A little of both? Why don't you sound off in the comments? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, shoot me a like, uh, shoot me a subscription, and uh, jingle the jangle if it pleases you. Appreciate you watching. Um, I'll catch you next time, and have a good night.